in this so in this segment we're going to be talking about kind of a Tory MP getting cooked on trying to pretend they're the party of kind of fiscal responsibility and trying to take shots at Labour for, um, you know, promises around borrowing to invest in the economy, which is one, you know, very um, good way of boosting the economy is to borrow to invest in the economy so that it can grow. And I think Jess Phillips gives a really funny answer here um, and a lot of the audience back it, but I feel like she should have given a better answer. But um, this could be a massive problem for Labour because they don't know how to combat this question. Uh, properly and I think Starmer has really caused a lot of problems in the stuff he has said around borrowing and that's one of the hurdles Labour are going to run into so we'll listen to this clip here just at the time we've stabilized the economy following the pandemic following the Ukraine invasion we have the Labour Party coming forward uh, pretending that it can borrow 28 billion without having a negative impact you know how much on the economy, it, is will, at the it will have a negative impact, and they also. I mean, it, it depends what you do with the money, right? You know, Sunak borrowed 30, 37 billion for test and trace. Um, that didn't help the economy really at all, did it? But Labour's plan to borrow around 20. Uh, it's not even borrow anymore. I don't know what they're how they're planning on raising this money. It's a bit weird. They're being very. Um, weird about it and that's something we'll discuss in another video but you know Starmer has been has been called um economically illiterate by economists like Stephanie Kelton who the person who wrote the deficit myth so you know on the economy not the best or not good at all but th this clip is pretty funny uh, threaten one of the most successful rollouts of renewables you've seen in the world in this country since 2010 it was there were stories of businesses not wanting to invest in things like offshore wind in the UK because they didn't think it was worth their time so I don't know how successful our rollout is I'll be honest the we are seeing hundreds of billions invested in this in this country transforming our energy mix and we mustn't go back to a position where we have labor mismanagement meaning that they talk what do you mean can about, i can i talk, just talk say, about green on, progress Graham, Graham. but don't deliver hang on let's just Graham. come back from that jess do you know how much borrowing is that at the moment i think i think it's a an precisely why we don't need time, another 28 billion an all-time high that your government has put it up to they've wasted according to the mirror i think they've wasted around 100 billion since the election Imagine that money was invested properly into the economy, into schools, into services, um, and things like that, into councils. Imagine what a difference that kind of money would make. I think it's like £58,000 per person in the country more than it was and you want in to 2010. More. Now, the situation, I'm not, if you'll give me the respect, Graham, going to take advice from somebody who voted for Liz Truss on the economy. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie, it's a zinger. It's a zinger line. It's a very good line, but it's not going to answer the fundamental question of what are Labour going to do with this money and how is it going to help, especially in the context of Starmer talking about fiscal rules and all this other nonsense. Um, so we'll cut to another clip of um, a guy I don't really respect, Mr. Mr. Park Classes, um, talking about this kind of stuff. And it kind of, I think Labour, a bit, it, it's a bit confusing as to what they're going to do, like how they're going to raise the funds and what they're going to invest in specifically. Yes, we, we are committed to it, subject to our... So it's committed to the £28 billion by the end of the, the next parliament. ...school rules, and the one that's most relevant to this question is that we will get debt, national debt falling as a percentage of the size of the economy by the next parliament. But so the ways you could do that is you could either grow the economy, which means our debt-to-GDP ratio comes down, or you pay off the national debt, um, which will obviously bring our debt-to-GDP ratio down. We're confident we can do both, and I'll, I'll just quickly explain why. One, where we are investing alongside business to have more secure energy supplies so that we can lower bills for people at home, where we're investing alongside business to create new jobs in the country, those activities will stimulate economic growth. But it's, the question is, where are you going to get that money to do, that, to do these um, partnerships or whatever from? Where's that money going to come from? You know, because unless you're going to borrow the money, like you have to grow the economy to get a surplus or something. What you know, it, it, this is the key question that I don't understand from Labour. Because what they said originally was we're going to borrow 28 billion pounds a year, invest it into green energy. Then they come out and said we're going to spend, I think, 28 billion towards the end of the Parliament on green initiatives. But it's very mixed on what they're going to do. And and now they're saying, well, we might do it subject to the fiscal rules. It's very confusing. Which means that it will be easier to be able to get a return from those investments to pay off that debt and to get debt reducing as the size, a percentage of the size of the economy. And the second thing to say is that what we have said is we're going to ramp up uh, to £28 billion a year towards the end. So, you know, somehow they're going to have to get to a position where they're going to be able to spend £28 billion a year on um, 
green technology, green investment without really borrowing, without borrowing the money. So the question is, where's that going to come from? End of the next parliament, because it will take time to spend that money effectively and we will only spend it effectively. Uh, but also because after the Liz Trust quasi Quateng period in government, the cost of uh, borrowing for the country is much higher than it was in the past. And we will only borrow to invest alongside business where it's prudent to do so and subject to our fiscal rule. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, the thing is with the fiscal rule stuff, like if they did borrow to invest that money, right, the amount of jobs and, um, you know, manufacturing, etc., you can create in the country would be tremendous. So long as, you know, we have the expertise and the people and the facilities to do this kind of stuff, it would be great. You know, when you look at what the Americans are doing with their kind of Green New Deal, what Joe Biden is doing, um, they're trying to make as much of it as possible, as much of the green... Um, kind of the the infrastructure for it in America as possible, which is great because it creates jobs in America. If you look at what China are doing, they're trying to create, you know, most of the world's solar panels. I think they are doing that. And that creates a lot of jobs in China. Obviously, it's not great for, uh, you know, kind of emissions because that's going to be shipped all over the world. So if we can manufacture as much here or say in Europe as we can, it'd be great. But this whole thing about the fiscal rules thing, it just doesn't, I can't see a world where they can grow the economy enough to kind of spend that kind of money, if that makes sense, without it borrowing, without borrowing. And because Labour keep making and borrowing into such a dirty thing, it doesn't it doesn't really make sense. Um, I can't. It's because they don't have to combat it because they spend so much time saying, oh, you know, the Liz Trust budget failed because of unfunded uh, promises or whatever. But the tax cuts were going to be funded by a bo via borrowing. The problem was that, you know, there was no there was no return on it, no return on investment. The economy would have tanked because of the tax cuts because it wouldn't have generated a return. If Labour can come out with a plan and say, look, we're going to invest this much in green energy. This is the return it's going to give us in terms of raw amount of money. But also, um, you know, we can lower our energy bills because that money will go um, towards, you know, British people's how uh, electricity bills or whatever I think that would fly a lot better and if Labour actually had plans on where they were going to invest the green energy before the election I feel like that would go a long way and make a much stronger argument and Labour can use the argument like look you guys borrowed money you wasted a hundred billion pounds since 2019 but imagine that money had been invested in the economy and I think that would be a much stronger argument and Labour can say look we're gonna borrow a lot less than you guys did and we're gonna invest that in the economy and we're going to create jobs and it's going to be much better for people because not only are we going to be creating jobs and economic growth, but also we're going to be lowering people's bills. I think that's what Labour should have done. But, you know, Lewis Goodall talks about this. He talks about the continue, uh, the contours of the next election are clear. The Labour Party are trying to, the Conservative Party, sorry, are trying to fight on Labour's £28 billion pledge and on a 2015-style Osbornite economic vision. The latter is a big shift. It's largely given up on the 2016-19 realignments. So that's where, you know, the Tories kind of went more of a populist angle under May and obviously Boris Johnson. And so what they're trying to argue is that borrowing is bad and all this other kind of stuff and we need austerity. So they've gone back to the austerity era of politics, which is something we saw obviously under David Cameron, which was a disaster for this country. Um, Jeremy Hunt made Labour's task in government even harder. It's still not properly appreciated how humstrung Labour will be because borrowing is still quite high. Um, and, you know, you do need to prove to the market to an extent what you're going to do with the money. But again, this is you know the same bond market that gave... Um, soon act 37 billion pounds to waste on test and trace um so you know labor I don't, I don't think by making borrowing toxic is a good idea again you can point to other countries that are looking to borrow to invest in their countries uh joe Biden, obviously america being one uh france being another but you know they found an attack line on the tories and they're going to run with it but i just feel like it will come back to haunt labor um at some point but you know i, I guess what labor could just run with is this line here I'm not, if you'll give me the respect, Graham, going to take advice from somebody who voted for Liz Truss on the economy. Uh, maybe that's all Labour need, really. Say, so, yeah, I'm not going to take lectures from someone who voted for the Liz Truss budget. Maybe that's all Labour have to say on the economy when the Tories attack them. And just say, like, you voted for the uh, budget that spiked interest rates. You don't get to speak on this. You can sit outside and let the adults discuss this. Um, so I found this pretty funny, but overall, I think... Labour's tactics and kind of a discussion around borrowing is just not going well at all. And I feel like this could be a, a bit of a fault line for Labour, as kind of Lewis Goodall points out. But anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.